Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to another very bitty, very impromptu style video. I know you guys enjoying, enjoyed the last kind of vlog style video that I did. So this is me preparing for multiple <laughs> postpartum visits, but as I would prepare for any postpartum visit really. And I thought I might bring you along with some of the bits and pieces that I am doing and how it looks to be a postpartum doula. So if you have any questions for what it's like to be a doula, do just hit me up with the, in the comment section down below, or you can message me, a direct message me on Instagram. If you're not, aren't following me there already, I'm at birthday be beyond with lots of little underscores in between. And I would love for you to come and join me over there. When it comes to postpartum visits, it's very much individualized in terms of how frequently I visit them, how long I stay, spend with them, in terms of the duration, how their birth was, if this is their first baby, if they are breastfeeding or bottle feeding, how good their support system is in terms of partners, family, if they have friends who've had babies, if they are... Um, if they've had a physiological smooth vaginal delivery or maybe if they've had a lot of stitches or a cesarean birth, you get the gist. Or if breastfeeding isn't going as well as they'd hoped and they need more support from uh, the lactation end of things, of course I will see them more frequently to make sure that baby's doing well, gaining weight, mum's nipples are okay, that sort of stuff. As a general rule though, when I'm preparing for a postnatal visit, I will bring something from home Generally, I will bring with me a bone broth. So I have that bubbling away on the stove. I will bring, and as a part of my bone broth, I generally will make things that are really rich, really nourishing. I'll leave it to like bubble away for about six hours or so in the slow cooker or just on the stove on low heat. I always add in a cap of cider, apple cider vinegar with the mother. I always add in some seaweed for extra iodine. I also like to add in things like ginger and turmeric and garlic and, you know, onions and things like that that are going to help to really just bring down any inflammation in the body and really nourish those cells to encourage healing. Loads of lovely collagen and um, all sorts of fantastic amino acids and the proteins of bone broth so even if mum is struggling to get in enough calories during the day that's a really nice thing for her to be able to sip away on so I'll bring a flask of bone broth with me generally warm if I can so they can just stay in bed and sip away on that or, or like heat up like a mug for them while I'm there I also bring some sort of a herbal tea today um I just want to kind of show you what I'm doing am I gonna be able to show you I might have to just pick everything up here is some tea that I've been having I've got been picking throughout the year kind of dried out in here I've got some nettle some red clover some ladies mantle I also have some cleavers in here I've got some raw wild honey local honey um, so I add that to it and depending on mum's needs so nettle ladies mantle beautiful for bone for um, blood building hibiscus also beautiful for blood building if mum has had a lot of, a lot of blood loss they, those would be the things that I would be focusing on if it's just about sort of calming mum and helping her regulate and helping her sort of sink into her newborn bubble I will add things like rose really heart opening I will add things like um dandelion if mum is really very swollen very odematous post birth so that's another thing that I will add in there it depends on what mum's needs are so that's one thing I like to do so I'll bring like a warm flask of tea for her to sip away on generally sweetened with honey if mum is vegan I'll add a little bit of maple syrup and the other thing that I like to do for every single mama is bring them a warming nourishing meal something that is warm so not like a cold salad something that is easy to digest we want things that are going to be easy on the digestive system everything has been kind of misplaced and uh, we need to be really easy on that so something like a stew, a soup, maybe a dal, a mild curry, lots of warming spices and herbs can be useful. In terms of things to avoid, I would always avoid sage and mint because they can have an impact on lactation. So they can actually reduce your supply significantly enough if you eat enough of it. So they're the only two things that I really will closely avoid. 
um, outside of that, I also make sure and bring, so at the moment I'm making like a wild rice creamy chicken soup with some sweet corn and loads of onions and garlic and butter and cream and really nourishing, really warming, really easy to digest. Um, and I'll make some like fresh baked bread for her to have with like a bit of butter on the side and her and her family can kind of, it's enough to feed a whole family. So it's not where I'm just feeding mum and then she feels like she has to mind the whole family. That's a good thing to remember. The next thing that I like to do when I'm there, aside from doing a little bit of light cleaning, so I'll always throw on a wash, I'll put away any laundry that needs to be done. If there's a, a dog that needs to be walked, I'll offer to do that. Or if there is an older child who needs to, some attention or to be played with, I'll always say, you know, would you like some time to connect with your other child? And I can, you know, wear baby in the wrap and they can have a little nap there and you can connect with them. Or would you like some time maybe where I'm wearing the baby and you can have a bath? or a shower. And outside of that, I think about things that I can do while mum is nursing baby. Can I give her, you know, massage? Can I give her a foot rub, a foot massage? Can I maybe do a guided meditation for her? Can I do some birth story listening? You know, a bit of debriefing can be really helpful, particularly if I haven't been able to be there at the birth, but even more so if I have been there, I can offer um, some more advice and guidance around processing of all of that. Birth processing is so important. Um, other things that I like to bring with me is something for a foot soak particularly if you're breastfeeding and if you're in a high stress situation as well so if your birth has been maybe very traumatic for you our body is becomes almost immediately depleted of in particular magnesium potassium sodium and so we want to really be replenishing all of those nutrients or those um minerals you can take like an adrenal cocktail. So I will sometimes bring, you know, in terms of the things that I like to bring with me, I'll ask, I'll text them ahead of time and say, are you craving anything? I'm on my way. Do you need me to stop and get anything en route? Um, and if mom is like, I'm just so thirsty because as we breastfeed, we get this like overwhelming sensation of thirst. And sometimes that's where I will move away from like the warming drinks. And I think, okay, so we need something that's like also refreshing. So we're thinking about a mixture maybe of coconut water and orange juice with a little bit of ice that can be so cooling and refreshing and you can add in your trace minerals there maybe I'll share my link to the fav my favorite ones down below I also at the moment uh, there are loads of wild roses in our garden so I'm going to make like a wild rose lemonade and I've also got some elderflower so I'm going to make an elderflower lemonade as well or like cordial other things that I like to do I'm literally looking at the things that I'm bringing with me in terms of food and things that are going to be easy in the digestive system, particularly if you've had a cesarean birth or if you're a little bit frightened of the first bowel movement, making sure that it is soft and smooth makes it so much easier to do. So I will always have a stash of these in our pantry. This is just prune juice from Concentrate. I find that it works best if mum does like half oh, half a glass of this of warm water and the other half is prune juice at least one glass a day for the first I would say like six weeks after birth because it can take a real while for things to just rejig and find their place so prune juice I will always bring that with me I also do like homemade calendula oil because when baby has those first few poos that sticky kind of tarry meconium it can be really harsh on their bottoms but also if you have any of those babies who are like full term they can come out a little bit wrinkly and dry like little old old men or old women and so I've made this beautiful calendula oil um, infusion I'll show you how I make that up in a minute um, other things that I like to bring would be like one-handed snacks so I'm gonna sit down I've got these dates here that need to be um, the stones need to be removed and I might add some cacao nibs some oats maybe some apricots for more iron and make some little energy balls or some bliss balls and dipped in half hot chocolate half chocolate and my mouth is literally watering they are a fantastic one-handed breastfeeding snack so that's really helpful I think with all of these roses as well I might make a little rose tincture because it's such a lovely like heart heart opener um I know I had that postnatally with myself and I just it brings back such lovely memories of this time of year and people having babies at this time of year summer babies there's something about them so that gives you a gist oh no that does not give you a gist of course I got called away momentarily because the guys found a frog in the garden the tiniest sweetest little frog and of course they want to keep him as a pet um 
So it was golden for that conversation, but also to say well done because um, well spotted. Our garden is like rewild at the moment. So it's hard to really see anything. And um, they found a baby frog, adorable. I know one of my friends who's obsessed with frogs and would have been very sad to have missed that opportunity. So sorry, Neve. <laughs> okay, where was I? In terms of other things that I bring, I, again, depending on what sort of postnatal care this mummy requires, will bring with me either a foot soak, so to get all those lovely um, minerals back in. In terms of the Epsom salts that I get, I get this massive bucket, even the bigger ones sometimes because I like to use it myself, but this is so wonderful and it's literally just magnesium flakes, I believe. Ooh. Yeah, and nothing else, so no sense. Occasionally, so if it's for a foot soak, I will add like rosebuds and maybe some lavender oil, and maybe a little bit of mint oil just to kind of cool down any hot feet during the summer. However, if, if, I'm, if I'm making, if mum's had a vaginal delivery, as opposed to a cesarean birth, and I am making her a sitz bath for her to rest her bottom in, or sore, sore bottom, I will not add any fragrances. Occasionally, very occasionally, I will add in a drop or two of tea tree oil, only a drop or two, because I have found both with my own practice, um, but also in my midwifery, that any more than that has been proven to find, we've, we've had an increase in mums coming in with their stitches breaking down too soon, and some mums having like, um, like over production, over granulation, where the body is like going into overdrive trying to create that healing tissue, uh, which isn't actually a good thing despite what it sounds like. So I would be very, very mindful of that. And, um, you know, asking on the way what sort of needs mum's mum has and talking to them ahead of time. So as a part of my prenatal visits, if it's a, a part a, a client who I'm supporting both in birth and postnatally, I will do things like get myself familiar with their kitchen, get myself familiar with where's the washing machine, where do they keep their tea bags, um, where do they have like their dry goods. I also like to think of myself as like a house a house snooper. <laughs> so I will get myself familiar with things like um, where their bed, what their bed setup is, where they leave their linen so that I can, you know, make a nice fresh bed for them when they're having that bath so they can come back into a nice fresh bed. I, what other things do I like to do at a postnatal visit? Hmm. Anyhow, I'm going to start making these bits and pieces and no doubt I'll think of some other bits and I'll come back into you. So, chicken soup is nearly done. I'm going to be diving into making this lemonade and I'm gonna make, use this gin to um, make this rose tincture. But I wanted to show you what I'm putting in the, um, the tea today. So I have lemon balm, rose hips, ladies mantle, great like uterotonic drug if mum is at risk of having any bleeding or to ease those kind of post postpartum cramps. Hibiscus, a nettle for blood building as well. And um, you'll see it comes out like this beautiful, like pinky color at the end. And oh yeah, I suppose worthwhile noting as well that when it comes to postnatal care and postnatal support, that I'm holding space for the whole family. So I'm never expecting partners to be booted out. I'm never expecting grandmothers to be booted out. In, in fact, they're welcomed with open arms. And I, if anything, give them direction as to how they can support the family better. And I like to set the tone for that in the way that I come into the space and um, in the way that, you know, I arrive with home baked food. And I will always encourage mamas to, in preparing for their postpartum, 
in looking at all of those things, in looking at, okay, how are we going to delegate out the chores during the week? Who is going to be in charge of doing shopping? Are we going to get shopping in? Who is going to be in charge of meals? Um, can I stock the freezer with things like the soups and the stews? so that maybe all I have to make is the accompaniment. Can I organize a meal train for this mama with her friends and family so that she doesn't have to cook herself for ideally the first month of her birth? In terms of the recipes that I use, is the book in here? Hang on, you're gonna get the guided tour around my house now. In terms of the recipes that I use, there are some fantastic books out there with some really beautiful like warming, soups and stews and things like that but this book here look you can tell I like books this book here is really great if you are struggling on how to prepare and how to cook for a new mum the first 40 days the essential art of nourishing the new mother and it's really lovely because it also details in the first chapter a little bit about what exactly the first 40 days is why we practice it and you know sort of understanding postpartum a little bit so really really lovely and actually a really lovely gift I would say for a mum to be just to kind of better understand how she can prepare for this new phase in her life so if you are looking to support a new mum soon if you are looking to find ways that you can hold space for her I would consider doing one or all of these things sorry you've got a view of just my chest there um but if you don't know how to support her, if you don't know how to help her with breastfeeding, if you don't know what to do when you enter her home and you have this feeling of wanting, almost expecting to be hosted, just don't go. Don't ring the doorbell. Leave a hot meal at her door and reverse away and text her to say your, your dinner's arrived. That is probably the best thing that you can do. If you live far away from her and you're looking to support her, send a meal delivery kit to her house so she doesn't have to do any cooking. You're looking at things like Deliveroo, you're looking at Kayla's Kitchen. What was the one that we had postnatally? E2? E2. They are really nice and you can get them catering to all sorts of needs. So, you know, high protein, vegetarian, paleo you get the idea. Um, it's something relatively new in Ireland, but really, really wonderful postnatal gift. Other things that you could look at then would be hiring a cleaner for them for the first period of time, or looking at getting, you know, um, a dog walker or a really good quality carrier or sling so that they can, or a consultation with a baby wearing consultant, that would be wonderful. Or a lactation consultant if they are planning on breastfeeding, or even better, a postpartum doula who can link them in with all of those supports and be that listening ear that supportive touch if you are looking for a postnatal doula I actually don't really take on as a general rule postnatal clients outside of my birth clients but there are so many if you go to doula care Ireland they've got a fantastic agency running here in Ireland or if you go to doula.ie um Doula, doula Association of Ireland yeah so they've got loads of doulas and you can actually type into the map finding a doula in your area so it's a great way to find out who is in your area who you're going to click with and who is going to be a good support a good fit for you in this really intimate space of postnatal <laughs> <laughs> sorry you can hear our dinner sizzling in the background but you can see here we've just made sure we put in this lovely fresh calendula <gasps> taking the stalks and leaves off and I immersed it with um, organic rapeseed oil um, stick, stick, and you can see at the bottom show them the bottom show them the bottom March this is the beautiful old oil, and then we're gonna give it a stir, and then actually leave it on the windowsill. I've been doing a different type of infusion recently. <laughs> I did a gorgeous course yeah, yeah. for her postpartum and birth yeah. and pregnancy, and it's beautiful. I will leave it linked down below. So now, we're going to make our, that must be very annoying when you can't actually see faces, aha, make our rose and elderflower cordial or lemonade. So I have my big crise pot filled with, I would say about three cups packed of wild rose petals. You like the marshmallow smell? So 
that's lovely and actually the first thing that i add is lemon juice because that really says not only the color but also the smell that's beautiful dancing and then i have a further three cups of elderflower i will leave the recipe that i like to use down below this year if I'm brave enough, I'm going to actually swap out the caster sugar in this recipe for 100% maple syrup or possibly coconut sugar, but that gives it kind of like a caramelly taste. I'm not too sure yet, but I'll leave the recipe that I like to use down below in the description box and I'll let you know how my version this year works out. For those of you who are wondering, oh, thank you, baby. Let's get out the last of these um, petals and this beautiful elderflower. Ah. Um, so for those of you who are wondering how I dry out any like herbs or petals if I don't want to use them fresh, you want to take the leaf off baby? Thank you. I use this, it's actually a strainer for flour I believe, but you can see it's got like this wire mesh on the back, but it is slightly elevated. So I will just place this either on my windowsill or in like a dry, um, cool area to dry out and aerate <laughs> you can also like make bunches and hang them from the windowsill or hang them from the ceiling we have this lovely like twisted hazel branch occasionally i will hang herbs and things like that from there but for this beautiful fuchsia uh oh naked boy in the background i'm going to just sprinkle it into this make sure that there's lots of space between because that's where molding happens and then leave it about a week I'm also just going to take, we don't really drink, so I mostly use this for tinctures, but I'm actually going to take whatever's left in this and jam in some of those wild rose petals on top to make like an alcohol based uh, rose tincture. You can also use like a glycerol base. Um, there's definitely another way of doing this, a water-based tincture, but I find alcohol the easiest to do. Um, I always used to joke postnatally that I was taking so many little tinctures and herbs that I was like almost a little bit boozed up because I just loved loving on myself in that way and I was adding like tinctures to everything that I was drinking. However, uh, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna add all of my lovely rose petals in here, just shove them right in and then leave it for again like 10 days a week or so and come back and strain it out and pour this little tincture into whoop, shake it up pour the tincture into it's gonna go this lovely rosy color pour it into some little like dropper bottles do i have a dropper bottle to show you i buy these bulk on amazon i know i shouldn't i'll leave the link for them down below but uh this is what i will give the calendula oil in and then any tinctures in either this or like a clear bottle just make sure everything's like super well labeled i did it again i completely forgot to close out this video <clears throat> so I hope you enjoyed kind of getting prepared for me, with me even, it's been a long day guys, um, for a postpartum visit as a postpartum doula, how you might get some ideas on how to support your friends, your loved ones in welcoming their baby into the world and in feeling supported and minded and yeah, able to really enjoy that postmortem experience and reduce the likelihood of them becoming unwell, pushing themselves outside of the home before they needed to, trying to like bounce back, that bounce back culture is so real, and instead leading it, leaning into that fourth trimester idea, staying in the bed for a week, around the bed for another week, around the house for a further week, and then just really slowly, slowly getting back into daily life. Um, and with healing, if we are protecting this fourth trimester, I've seen mamas have a much lower incidence of having mental health issues and postnatal depression, postnatal anxiety. So let's support them from the get-go. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.